Well, let's begin with our today's topic. Our today's topic is a very important one and very interesting too. We people are dealing it in an everyday life. So many times around us, we have seen the refraction of light. Yes, I'm talking about the refraction of light. When whenever I have taught this particular article to you people, while following the guidelines, while following the outline, while following the sequence of our syllabus, at that particular time, we have already seen the reflection of water waves. So first of all, according to the sequence of our syllabus, we have studied the refraction of water waves. And after that, we have reached to the article of refraction of light. Do people know that actually when light travels from one material medium to another material medium, the change, the change in the speed of light do occur. Light changes its speed when it enters from one medium to another medium. There are so many examples around us. As an example, if the light from the water enters into the material medium of air, it changes its speed because we know the light travels with a larger speed in air with a lesser speed in water. So the change of speed occurs due to which sometimes or most of the times the bending also do occur. Yes, there is a case of refraction of light. There is a case of when light enters from one material medium to another material medium. But in that particular case, the refraction of light, the bending of light do not occur. So the change of speed does not always mean, I repeat, the change of speed does not always mean the change in the direction or the bending will definitely be happen. There is a case we have studied in case of refraction of light, in case of which we have clearly seen. What have we seen? We have seen that light do not bends. Light do not change its direction. I can repeat that particular case by hoping that I hope at that particular moment that you all of you people know the meanings of point of incidence. You know the meaning of incident ray of light, the refracted ray of light, the emergent ray of light. You people also have done experiments with me in the physics lab in case of which we have dealt with some transparent bodies. By naming transparent bodies, I mean the bodies through which light can pass through. And most of the transparent bodies examples are being coated by the help of material glass, by the help of material plastic. So we have dealt, we have done different experiments of refraction of light by considering different kinds of glass bodies. We have, as an example, we have done an experiment uh, with rectangular glass blocks. We have done experiment with semicircular glass block. We have done experiment with a shape, triangular shape, three-dimensional triangular shape called prism. So these three kinds of different examples, these three kinds of different uh, questions are very much being asked by your examiner in Cambridge studies. So that's why I'm also preferring these three glass bodies, these three transparent bodies in order to study the whole concept of refraction of light. So you people can see at the present moment, you are sharing on my screen that we have outlined, we have drawn the outside outline boundary of a rectangular glass block. At that particular rectangle, inside that particular rectangular, actually we have placed, actually a teacher has placed his or her rectangular glass body. After placing a rectangular glass body, in this area, in this particular area, then we have drawn its outline so that after the experiment, we can remove the glass body and we can trace or we can complete the further diagram. Then you all know by the help of two pins, by the help of two pins, if we have placed our ray box at that particular position, if we have placed our ray box at that particular position, then by using pin one and pin two, we have traced 
or we can trace uh, an incident ray of light. After tracing the incident ray of light, the people can also see that light ray is traveling through the glass block and then emerging out here. This particular ray of light will be called the emergent ray of light. So by placing pen three and pen four, we all can find out the emergent ray of light too. And then after removing the glass block from this area, after removing the glass block or moving the glass block, or we can use this particular outline of the rectangular glass block in order to draw the rectangle, in order to draw the refracted ray of light. So an incident ray of light here, the emergent ray of light here, and the refracted ray of light can be plotted inside here. In this particular case, there is no bending of light has happened. Yes, when the light, when a light ray has entered from air into the glass, it does not, it does have a change in speed. It definitely does have a change in speed. The speed of light is definitely being slowed down when the light ray has entered from air into glass. But in this particular case, there is no bending of light has happened. We all know that is the case of zero angle of incidence. I hope you all can recall the definition of angle of incidence. You people can write it on your paper, the definition of angle of incidence, and later on, I'll talk about it, what was that particular definition. Angle of incidence. The definition of angle of incidence. Angle of incidence, which is always being measured between the normal line and the incident ray of light. Angle of refraction, which is always being measured between the normal line and the refracted ray of light. Now you also should know the definition of normal. Normal line, the normal which is called normal because it makes an angle of 90 degree. The boundary line separating the two mediums, the two mediums from medium number one, the light is traveling to medium number two. So there are two different mediums has to be present, has to be considered if we want to study the concept of refraction of light. So the basic definitions, angle of incidence, normal line, incident ray of light, refracted ray of light, emergent ray of light, <coughs> the transparent bodies, all such kind of definitions are required in order to revise the whole topic. And I hope at this particular stage, because now you people are 11C students, not 10C students, so you are 11C students, so at this particular stage, you should know all those definitions by heart. So starting with this concept of refraction of light, once again, I repeat, when a light ray to enter from one material medium to another material medium, definitely the change in the speed to work. I repeat, when light enters from air to glass, its speed slowed down. According to V equals to F into lambda, its speed slowed down, its wavelength is being reduced, its wavelength is being decreased, its wavelength is also being reduced, its wavelength reduced, its speed reduced. But F remains constant because the frequency of the oscillator, oscillator which is oscillating due to which those light rates are being generated. If we are using a ray box, then inside the ray box, inside the bulb of the ray box, something is oscillating. Maybe atoms are oscillating or electrons are oscillating, but something is definitely oscillating due to which those light rays are being produced. So the next case of refraction of light, which is the most important case, which is the main case, because due to that, particular case in which we definitely have used the incident ray of light. We are going to use the incident ray of light, which is not making the zero angle of incidence with the boundary line. In that particular case, the incident ray of light has to make some angle, some non-zero angle with the normal line so that the angle of incidence will not be equal to zero. And in that case, we will see the complete case of refraction of light. In that case, the speed slowed down. In that case, we will see the bending of light also will happen. As an example, when a light ray will enter from optically less dense medium to optically more dense medium. As an example, when a light ray will enter from air into glass, it is going to bend towards the normal. It is going to bend 
towards the normal because it is slowed down. And because it is slowed down, it is going to bend towards the normal. Then the angle of incidence is not equal to zero. In this particular video, I'll show this complete video in the end to you people also. But in this particular video, you can see that teacher is performing an experiment in order to demonstrate the refraction of light to the students by using a rectangular, by using a rectangular glass block. You can clearly see the teacher, first of all, has drawn the boundary line, the boundary line of the rectangular glass block. And now teacher is trying to choose some incident ray of light in order to plot, in order to show. So I'll come back to this particular video once again. But first of all, I need to teach this particular case to you people by using this particular diagram. Now here, see once again, we are performing this experiment by using the rectangular glass block. We are performing this experiment by using the rectangular glass block. Or we have performed this experiment by using the rectangular glass block. The rectangular glass block was being placed here. Its outline or boundary line was being traced on the paper. Then a ray box is being placed at that particular position. See it clearly better. See the movement of the cursor and listen to my words. At that particular point, at that particular position, we have placed a ray box. So it means the ray, the light ray, which travels in the form of straight line, will be traveling or would have been traveled along this particular path along which I'm moving my cursor. So along this particular path, the light has struck with the boundary line, separating two mediums. This is the boundary line. This is the boundary line separating two mediums. So along this particular path, the light has traveled, a ray of light has traveled, a ray of light has traveled and struck at that point of incidence. This is the point of incidence. This is the boundary line separating two mediums. I have also played, play, plotted or later on, after doing our experiment, we did plotted, we did plot this normal line this is the incident ray of light by placing two pins, pin one and pin two on any two particular positions at a suitable distance away from each other. We can trace later on on the piece of paper, the incident ray of light, like it is being plotted by a teacher. So ray box is being placed here. We can clearly see the light ray will be traveling along this particular path. Then slowed down, then its speed is being slowed down after entering inside glass, it bends towards the normal, it bends towards the normal, traveled along this particular path, will definitely have traveled along this particular path, later on I'll prove that, and then it is going to be emerged out, it is going to be emerged out into the air, this will be called the emergent ray of light. So what we did in an experiment was, we have plotted the outline of the rectangular glass block. We have placed pin one and pin two so that later on we can change those two points. By the help of those two points, we can get the incident ray of light. We have used pin three somewhere here, pin four somewhere here, so that later on we can convert by the help of those two positions of pin three and pin four denoted by a P3 and P4, the position of the emergent ray of light. And after doing that work, we have removed our rectangular glass block. That was the work we have obtained. That was the work we have obtained by the help of an experiment work in the physics lab. By using pin one position here by using pin two position here. These are actually the two points which were being encircled by us during the experiment. So by using, by using those two points positions, we can plot a straight line and we can extend that particular incident ray of light up to the boundary line separating air and glass. It means the point of incidence, this particular point of incidence will also be obtained. Then at that point of incidence, we can plot the normal line. This normal line, which is also being shown here. 
Then by using the position of pen three and position of pen four, we can plot the emergent ray of light. And we can extend this emergent ray of light up to the boundary line separating boundary line of glass and air. Here the boundary line separating air and glass. At that point of incidence, the boundary line is separating glass and air. So once again, we can also plot a normal line at that particular position too. Now, you know, we have removed the glass block. So this particular area is also available to do work. So now what can we do to that? Uh, this point of incidence and this point of incidence, both these two point of incidences can be joined by the help of a straight line. Both these point of incidences can be joined by the help of straight line so that finally we can obtain our third ray of light too. So now we have the incident ray of light, which was in the air. We have our refracted ray of light, which is present inside the glass block. We have our emergent ray of light, which is being emerged out into the air. So all of these rays of light are being obtained by us. So this is the case of 100% clear example of refraction of light in case of which you people can see that speed is being slowed down. The speed is being slowed down was being proved by us in case of water waves refraction. So here the speed is also being slowed down. Speed is being slowed down when the light is being entered from air into glass and once again is being increased when light has entered from glass into the air or light has emerged from glass into the air again. It also bends towards the normal because this time our angle of incidence is not equal to zero. So in exam questions, your examiner can ask you so many different types of questions which are being related with this exam. From this particular position, you can measure the value of angle of incidence from this particular angle by placing your protector somewhere here, which I'll show you in the video later on, that we can measure the value of angle of incidence. We can measure the value of angle of refraction here. And in this case, we can prove Arsenal's law too by getting, by using different values of angle of incidences, by tabulating the different values of angle of incidences, by obtaining the different values of angle of refractions. We will form a table. The first column of the table will be the number of observations. The second column will be the different values of angle of incidences, different chosen values of angle of incidences. The third column will be the values of angle of refractions, the corresponding angle of refractions. So we will use the different values of angle of incidences and we will get the different corresponding values of angle of refractions. So first column, I repeat, we will form a table. A table in case of fish, angle of incidences, corresponding angle of refractions, then sine of i's, then sine of r's, and through this table we can obtain, we can prove the result called Snell's law that sine of i over sine of r always remains constant. Later on I'll talk about it, but at the present moment I'll be dealing with An example, an example which is being taken from your past paper. This is one of those examples which is being given in your past papers. You people can clearly see that in a past paper question, your examiner has said that a ray box is being used by the help of points P and points Q. An incident ray is being plotted. The outline of the, rec of the rectangular glass block is being shown here. The position of pin 3 and pin 4 is being shown here. And in this case, your examiner was asking you to plot or to complete this particular diagram one by one. As an example, by the help of this position of pen, this small cross was actually the position at which the pen three was being placed. This small cross is representing actually the position at which the pin four is being placed. This is the case in which the rectangular, uh, the uh, horizontal orientation, I said the horizontal orientation of rectangular glass block is being taken. 
So a rectangular orientation of the glass block is being taken, ray box is being placed here, light is incident at that particular position, at that particular point of incidence. That is all which is being given, which is being shown by the examiner. And then one by one, your examiner has asked you to complete your work. First of all, your examiner has asked us to plot the emergent ray of light. And you people can see that I have plotted an emergent ray of light by plotting a straight line which is passing from the center of both crosses. You need to understand it, Peter. Listen my words clearly. I am clearly speaking. I'm clearly saying. I'm clearly instructing. I'm clearly advising that you need to. You need to plot a straight line which should pass through the center of this cross and from the center of this cross. And this line has to be extended up till the boundary line separating glass and air medium. So in this way, we will obtain the point of incidence also or the point of emergence also. So first of all, we have plotted our emergent ray of light. The incident ray of light was being given by the examiner as incident ray is in this particular direction from the top of the paper to the bottom of the paper similarly the direction of emergent ray of light will also be from the top of the paper towards the bottom of the paper in this particular direction when you will obtain this file you people need to plot the direction of the emergent ray of light also so we have started our question in which we have plotted the emergent ray of light First of all, we have plotted the emergent ray of light. Then, you people can see this, this particular normal is not being given to us. In case of refraction, we always plot our normal line, our imaginary normal line, which makes an angle of 90 degree with the boundary lines separating two mediums. So this normal, the normal of refraction is different from normal of reflection in a way that it has to be on both sides of the point of incidence, incidence, on both sides of the point of incidence. The normal line is present here. Normal line is also present here. So this is a normal line at the point of incidence from where the ray of light has entered from air into glass. This is the normal line which is being plotted at a point. This is the normal line which is being plotted at a point where the light ray has emerged out into the air. At that point, the light ray is being entered from air into glass. At that point, the light ray is being emerged out from glass into air. So I have plotted normal lines at both those positions. So this line and this line has to be parallel to each other in order to get both as perpendicular lines on the boundary lines separating two mediums. So this is the emergent ray of light now. This is the incident ray of light now. And you know, by joining this particular point of incidence with this point of incidence or point of emergence, we can obtain the refracted ray of light. That was the path chosen by light inside the glass block. That was the path dedicated to the ray of light by a nature. Because light has to follow the rules of nature. Light needs to follow the rules of the nature in order to travel. So light was traveling in the air along this path. Then it has to bend towards the normal. According to the law of Snell's law, according to the law of refraction called Snell's law, sine of i over sine of r, there must be a sort of a ratio between sine of i and sine of r. So it bends towards the normal. Then finally, when it is being emerged out into the air, its speed is being increased, so it has to bend away from the normal here. And you can clearly see the light is being bended away from the normal at the point of emergence. Then, Later on, usually your examiner used to ask that you need to extrapolate in the backward direction the emergent ray of light. This was the emergent ray of light which is traveling in this direction. But you need to extrapolate it in the backward direction so that we can finally prove that our emergent ray of light was actually parallel to the incident ray of light. So our emergent ray of light was actually parallel to the 
emergent ray of light and that can be proved by calculating distance from perpendicular distance our distance line which is making an angle of 90 degree with both the lines with which i am moving my cursor then you need to calculate a distance perpendicular distance between these two lines once again if this particular distance at this position is equal to this particular distance at that position then you people will obtain our result with which we can prove that the emergent ray of light is parallel to the incident ray of light so in our today's lecture we have seen the important concepts of reflection of light now all i want to show you people is that how have we obtained we did that experiment which our teacher which some teacher in this video is doing so all i want to prove all i want to show you people is that you people can clearly see how we did that so now i'm also entertaining your questions but please ask those questions one by one my child okay jibeta questions now it's a questions time are you listening me children are you listening me Amal, your name is being flashed on my screen. Are you listening me? Rahima Saleh. Sir, we don't have any questions. So, uh, is it clearly visible to you, Amal? Yes, sir. And in this, in this particular experiment, you can see what a teacher is doing? Yes. Yes, Up till now, what what he did? He traced the boundary of the glass block. By placing the rectangular glass block, first of all, the teacher has traced the outline of the boundary line of the glass block. And now, what is he trying to do? He is trying to mark the normal. Okay. Uh, anyone else should tell me the definition of normal line. Anyone else should tell me the definition of normal line, my child? Come on. Sir, the normal line is the line which makes an angle of 90 degrees with the boundaries of the medium. With the boundary line separating two mediums. Shabash, who are you? Arshia. Arshia. Well done, Arshia. The normal line is. Uh, is a perpendicular line is an imaginary line which is being traced by us which is being plotted by us in such a way that it should make an angle of 90 degree with the boundary line separating two mediums okay now someone can define the point of incidence or the incident ray of light Teacher has plotted the incident ray of light in this diagram randomly without using a ray box. Is it possible? My question is, please respond to my question. Whether it is correct or wrong, but you need to respond it, beta. Shabash, shabash. Uh, I'm saying teacher has plotted the incident ray of light in this sh shown video without using the ray box randomly. Is it possible? Yes. How can we say that it is possible, beta? How can we get the random ray of light? 
because light is traveling in all the random directions in the form of straight line so light yes. will definitely be traveling along that particular line too which is being shown by the teacher is it okay yes sir so an incident ray of light can be chosen randomly but you people later on will see that the emergent ray of light cannot be chosen randomly teacher will definitely see through the rectangular glass block the image of pin 1 and pin 2 and then teacher is going to plot the emergent ray of light here he'll show you or uh, in this video later on he'll show you teacher will show you that how has he plotted the emergent ray of light or how is he going to plot the emergent ray of light we did that experiment by the help of ray box yeah now you people can see now you people can see the teacher is seeing through the images of pin 1 and pin 2 through the glass block and then teacher has placed the pin 3 and pin 4 in a straight line of pin 1 and pin 2 whatever is being or was being a straight line according to the teacher so now you can see pin 1 and pin 2 is being has helped us to plot the incident ray of light similarly pin 3 and pin 4 are helping us in order to plot the emergent ray of light now this is the emergent ray of light now to two point of incidences are being obtained on both point of incidences teacher has placed the normal line and now teacher is trying to plot is plotting the refracted ray of light this is the refracted ray of light what is angle of refraction somebody needs to answer me what is angle of refraction Uh, sir, Jishabash, I'm listening. Sir, it is the angle between the refracted wave and the normal line at the point of incidence. Jishabash, it is the angle between the normal and the refracted ray of light at the point of incidence. This that's called the refracted ray of light. My today's lecture. is just a first lecture about refraction of light inshallah on monday we'll follow this article uh, the second lecture about refraction of light we'll complete this article and then later on we'll do some sort of assessment or some sort of uh, assignment related with the refraction of ray of light which i'll post you later on after monday after completing this lecture and uh, you can also see that in order to prove uh, we have proved when we have studied this article by extrapolating the emergent ray of light in the backward direction and in this way we have proved that the emergent ray of light and the incident ray of light are parallel to each other but here the mechanism of teacher is different the intention is same but the mechanism is different somebody can answer me how in this video the teacher is trying to prove that the incident ray of light and the emergent ray of light are parallel to each other how the teacher is trying to prove in this video not the way we did in our experiment there is a little difference between the two mechanisms shabash who is going to answer yes sir can you repeat the question once the question is beta when we did that experiment in order to prove that the emergent ray of light is parallel to the incident ray of light we have extrapolated the emergent ray of light in the backward direction that was our road map with which we have proved our answer but here the teacher is proving the same concept but the mechanism or the road map of teacher is different what is the road map of the teacher in this video sir shayad usne incidence se usko kiya extrapolate यस शाबाश एग्जैक्टली द टीचर ने हमने किया था एक्स्ट्रापोलेट इमर्जेंट रे ऑफ लाइट को वी हैव एक्स्ट्रापोलेटेड द इमर्जेंट रे ऑफ लाइट इन द बैकवर्ड डायरेक्शन बट इन दिस वीडियो द टीचर हैज एक्स्ट्रापोलेटेड द इंसिडेंट रे ऑफ लाइट इन द फॉरवर्ड डायरेक्शन ओके इज इट क्लियर बच्चों इज इट क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस Are you with me? Are you all with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, 
read this particular material which is available here some important concepts are being given here so uh, you can see this is also a very important concept but after reflection the wave has the same frequency but a different speed wavelength and direction except one case in case of which when the angle of incidence is equal to 0 in that case the direction is not being changed in that case the direction and frequency both remain same but only the wavelength and speed is being changed but all in all other cases when the angle of incidence is not equal to 0 so i am here bachcho i am here you people all you can see i am here i am talking about this particular concept then later on in our important concepts the higher the density the slower light travels yes as the density uh, now on this particular point i'm highlighting this these lines at this particular the higher the density the slower the light travels as an example the density of water is higher as compared to the density of air so inside water the light travels slower as compared to that of air in this case the angle of incidence was zero so no change of direction has happened in this case the angle of incidence is not equal to zero so we can clearly see the bending towards the normal when light has entered from air into glass and when light has entered from glass into air bends away from the normal then later on i need to lot talk about a bit about the law of refraction too law of refraction my child somebody can answer me what is law of refraction shabash what is law of refraction sir kaun sa wala law law of refraction i have highlighted it also refraction the important one the first one the second one was not that that important so you need to answer me the first one only uh the no. incident the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal are on, lies on the same plane that is the second one that is the second one yes this is also a law of refraction but that is not important from our syllabus point of view that law is that the incident ray the normal line and the refracted ray all lie in the same plane but the first law is very important one and that law is i have highlighted it on the screen also uh, that law is the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of refraction sir so the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of refraction the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction i repeat the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction remains constant for the two given medium and later on we are going to we have named that particular constant as the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium here i mean to say the second medium is the medium in which the refracted ray is being formed and the first medium is the medium in which the incident ray is being formed so i repeat here the law of refraction the important law of refraction which you need to learn which you need to write which you need to repeat which you need to recall in your worksheets for your final examination preparation too and that is the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction always remains constant always remains fixed constant always remains equals to a constant for the two given mediums is it clear bachcha yes sir yes sir so if this ratio remains constant it clearly means that sin of i and sin of r both these two terms both these two quantities both these two numbers both these two variables sin of i sin of r both these two variables are directly proportional to each other because the ratio remains constant so if i am going to plot a graph between sin of i and sin of r this graph will always be a if i'll plot a graph going between going to be a straight line 
it will okay. always be a straight okay. line straight. passing through the origin the origin origin shabash whenever the two quantities are directly proportional to each other we will always obtain a straight line uh, the graph as a straight line and that straight line will definitely pass through origin so that's why we used to say that whenever the two quantities are directly proportional to each other whenever the two variables are directly proportional to each other their graph will be a straight line passing through origin their ratio for one pair of reading will always be equal to their ratio of second pair of reading to the third pair of reading to the fourth pair of reading and so on and finally we used to say about the two variables which are directly proportional to each other that if the two quantities are directly proportional if the two variables are directly proportional to each other then if one variable will be doubled the other one will also be doubled if one will be increased five times the other will also be increased five times and if one will be halved the other one will also be halved so the time of our today's lecture is being completed beta you people can write your questions and whenever you want to ask those questions you can consult me through this google classroom through your whatsapp whatsapp group or whatever you want thank you so much allah hafiz to all of you welcome sir allah hafiz